Hello, everyone. Um, I am Andresa Fontoura, one of the co-founders of Women Inside Trade, and one of the responsible ones for the network's newest product entitled Coletania Witch. It is with great joy and satisfaction that we launched today on International Women's Day, the first volume of our book in partnership with the Center for Global Trade Investment Studies of the Getulio Vargas Foundation of Sao Paulo, supported by the WTO Chair. This book aims to promote specialized intellectual work from women and to honor the pioneers of the field of international trade, and in particular, Professor Vera Tortensen, a notable reference in Brazil and abroad. Coletania Weed features unpublished articles uh, involving topics related to the professional path of our honorary, Professor Vera, such as World Trade Organization, World, uh, Organization for Economic Cooperation and Development, Trade Agreements, Coherence and Convergence on Regulatory Matters, International Taxation, Intellectual Property, Sustainability, Gender Investments, among others. And the importance of her academic and professional legacy for our international trade community and for future generations is undeniable for sure. And the Women Inside Trade Group could not fail to honor her in this beautiful teamwork. So this work is therefore our contribution to the world in favor of a much better representation of the female figure in the literature of international trade. And it is the result, result of an outstanding collective effort. And with the release of her first book, uh, there is a thought of the British writer Virginia Woolf that comes to mind, that is, um, for most of history, Anonymous was a woman. So today, in the middle of 2021, and in the midst of several pandemic challenges, we dare say no more. Thank you very much and enjoy our launch event. Hi, good morning or afternoon, depending where you are. Um, to those of you who don't know me, I'm Veronica. I'm BMJ Institutional Relations Manager and I'm also one of Women Inside Trade co-founders. I'll not take too long, as I know I'm not the star of this show, but um, I'd like to invite you all on this March 8th International Women's Day to celebrate. I know there is still a lot we have to achieve. Um, the last year with the pandemic, we saw things get worse to some of us um, in, in in many countries and in Brazil, it's not different with um, violence against women and female uh, led businesses closing down. But we also have things to celebrate. And today I'd like to, you to take this opportunity with the launching of our book. Um, and of course, with our initiative, Women Inside Trade working for that. I'd also like to thank all who made it possible for us to be here from our organization, all those who direct or indirectly helped us launch this book today. Um, the bar is high and we did not have to lower it one bit to make it possible. So we have very capable women out there who can talk about trade and can give a concrete contribution to an international trade debate worldwide. So thank you all for participating and thank you to all women who were brave to be the first ones uh, and paved the way for us all to follow. Uh, before I close, I have to give a, a, a brief disclaimer that all manifestations expressed by staff members of Fundação Getúlio Vargas and participating guests represent their own opinions and thoughts, therefore do not represent the institutional position of FGV or other institutions. Um, we also um, reiterate that all those present here have agreed to participate in the event spontaneously and have authorized the use of their image for the live transmission as well as for the post-event video on FGV's official channel. Um, enjoy the event. Agora o disclaimer em português. As manifestações expressas por integrantes dos quadros da Fundação Getúlio Vargas e por convidados que participam dos eventos e transmissões online representam exclusivamente as opiniões de seus autores e não necessariamente a posição institucional da FGV. 
Reiteramos também que todos aqui presentes concordaram em participar desse evento de forma espontânea e, com isso, autorizam o uso de sua imagem por essa transmissão que ficará disponível posteriormente nos canais oficiais da FGV. Bom evento! Vamos lá? Quem é a próxima a falar? Você, Vera. Ah, você, Vera, você faz eu a Eu estava pensando na Carla. Good morning, everybody. Uh, it's a pleasure to be here. Uh, uh, let me, first, my first words are to thank Wits for, not only for the book, for the invitation to be honored in the book, the tribute on, uh, to me, and uh, as always to organize this meeting. Uh, I think that everything has a story, and let me tell you a, a brief history of uh, how we got there. Uh, remember that, uh, Gabriel, you remember very well, and Carmen also, and also Thais, many years ago in 95, you arrived in the, uh, in the WTO, and guess what happened? There is no special lawyers on trade. And what happened? We have a, a, um, the first panel, it's about gasoline. And then we have, but uh, then we have a, a, another one is about a, a chicken, a quotas of chicken with the European Union. And then we have uh, a Bombardier and Braer. And, uh, and the most important thing and in all of this, we have to invite lawyers from abroad, Americans, Europeans, and so on. So the discussion inside the mission was, come on, we have to, why do you not have a special lawyers on this? And if they will have no special ones, Uh, we have to create them. So the idea to create the internship in, in Geneva was exactly uh, to, to, to form people. And uh, then I came to Brazil and uh, I, I talked with, uh, with the world support at that time of Ambassador Laffer and uh, then minister. And I think I have to, to, to name the, this person and also Ambassador Seixas Correa. And then you arrive, I arrived in Brazil and I talked with CISA. CISA was the organization of the law firms up there. So Ubiratã and Regazine are the main ones. And then immediately we create very, with a lot of uh, enthusiasm, we created the, the internship. And you know, the most important thing for me is to hide in these boys and girls, Gabriel. At that time, it was forbidden to get in the, 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 the building of WTO without being a person from the meeting, from the, the mission. And so we have to put this person as uh, young staff of the, the, the mission, but uh, with no uh, relationship with the law firms. And so all the time I spend, I remember Carla, I, I remember talking to you, said, please come, you are not, your, everybody was fired <laughs> and everybody will be, uh, you worked for the government at that time. But some years uh, after this, uh, Law, uh, all the persons that the mission uh, nominate can be invited to get in. And now you have lawyers speaking on the, the panels, right? So this is a little bit of story. And then we have, I remember at my time, I had 120 boys and girls at that time. And then they became very important lawyers now. And these are the, the ones that are uh, taking care of, um, of uh, trade in Brazil. So uh, I think for introduction, let me tell you a little bit about why these nice ladies are here. Uh, because I am not a lawyer and uh, I study a lot when I arrived in Geneva. And for me, there's one that was you know, the, 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 the name of lawyer of WHO and this uh, is Gabriel. I remember Gabriel, see you, come on in the meetings, in the seminars. And I said, how can a person know so much? And for me, Gabriel is the person of Article 20. For the, for the ones that are not that specialist, at Article 20 is a kind of Pandora box, it's exceptions. You can open the Pandora and Gabriel all the time say, take care, take care. And for the, for the ones who love uh, the, that again, is the way how they transform gold and, uh, gold and, and uh, silver, come on, uh, the metals, right? Metals in the uh, turtles, right? How they said species that are in extinctions or resources uh, that are finishing, you have to take care and so on. 
So this is why uh, I think it's important, Gabriel, and, uh, and, and all my, my life we talk a lot, we know a lot about, uh, uh, I, I really, it was a really important person for me in Geneva. Then I have uh, Carmen. Carmen is the one, remember Carmen, in, when I arrived in 95, uh, preferential arrangements are kind of, no, no, they are going to destroy the WHO. Uh, and then you have Baguati say, come on, this is a spaghetti bowls of rules of origin and so on. And then uh, Carmen was there. It, it was during that time that we get the, um, the uh, uh, that Mercosul was um, passed through the examination of the committee. We have a new committee of preferential arrangements and all the times what an, an, uh, an agreement can do, what they cannot do. And then Carmen was there all the time, uh, helping us. And uh, I think she's the lady of Article 24, Carmen, is the article of preferential arrangements. Thais, now for Thais, Thais was, I think, the first <coughs> lady that arrived in, uh, in Geneva. I was there in 95, and I remember it's a club of boys. There is no woman there as, as, uh, as diplomats. And then Thais was the first fresh air that arrived. And, uh, and uh, I learned a lot and I know how difficult it was to get there as a, and become a specialist in trade. And then we are going to see the result of all this. Ladies, thank you very much. Thank you very much for it. And the end, I speak a little bit about the future and I speak in Portuguese so the girls can understand very well what we are going to say, right? So up to you ladies. Thank you, Vera. Thank you so much, all participants that are here. It's a pleasure and an honor to be moderating this event. Uh, and thank you for those that are listening to us, tuning us. Uh, you can send in questions through the YouTube. Uh, there is a link for questions. Uh, this is going to be a very informal <coughs> conversation. Um, we are going to ask our panelists a few questions about their trajectory. Uh, and I would like to start uh, introducing Gabrielle. Uh, she is a professor at the law faculty of UNIGE and a senior counselor at the WTO Research Division. And I would like to introduce my co-moderator, co-facilitator, Carla Junqueira. Uh, Carla was one of the first pupils of VERA back when VERA started the internship program in the mission. Currently, she has two PhDs in international law and uh, is uh, founder of her own law, trade law firm. So thank you. Thank you, Fernanda, for the kind introduction. Good morning, everyone. Happy International Women Day. I'm very proud to be here. I'm very proud to be part of this. I'm very proud of being one of the first pupils of VERA. When the WIT Network came with the idea to dedicate this first book to her, I didn't stop for a second to help to put it together. Uh, but now with further, without any further delays, I'd like to introduce you also to my co-moderator, Fernanda Giasnella, who worked as a research under, under Vera's guidance at Getulio Vargas Foundation for seven years. And currently Fernanda holds a master in LLM international law and is a human rights attorney work with gender and immigration. Now, Fernanda, you have the floor. Unmuting. <laughs> uh, thank you again. I would like to introduce Thais and um, Carmen. Uh, Thais is a general coordinator for management and governance at uh, Brazilian uh, Ministry of uh, Foreign Relations, and she's former advisor to uh, the DG of the WTO, uh, general director. Uh, Carmen Pontfiera is a former double. TO Secretariat staff and um, TPR, which is uh, Trade and Partnership uh, Agreements uh, Division at the WTO. And our first question for our participants is doo -doo -doo. What was your journey as a woman in the international trade field? and the role of trade in advancing the gender equality agenda. Carmen, you have the floor. Okay. <clears throat> yes, it is a difficult question, but uh, I will be short. 
the journey. I started uh, in 1973 in the GATT. Uh, I am a former staff. Uh, I am retired. I have been retired for 14 years. For you, that's an enormous time. Um, in fact, I started as a, I was a, a, an economist. I started in economic research where Gabriel is ending. <laughs> uh, but uh, I started uh, in economic research. And then after many years in economic research, analyzing trade, um, I entered into another item. I went to technical cooperation in the middle of the Uruguay round, which meant that uh, given my nationality, uh, Spanish, I was sent to Latin America and speaking Portuguese on top of it, I was sent to Latin America. One of my first conclusions of being sent to Latin America to, to explain WTO, well not GATT and Uruguay Brown, was that uh, in Latin America, there were many women in the audience, while in other parts of the world, there were not as many women in, in the audience talking about trade, but just a parenthesis. After that, I went to TPR, uh, Trade Policy Review, uh, to take charge uh, of uh, development and uh, PTAs, uh, preferential trade agreements. And uh, at that point, I, I had specialized already in, in some legal aspects, uh, a lot of legal aspects of the WTO and GATT. And at that point, I remember meeting Gabriel really on one thing, and it was a turning point. Because at that time, I was still a very, very rigid economist. <laughs> and I spent uh, a panel, I shared the panel with Gabriel on Turkey textiles. Turkey textiles was my turning point to become half, no, half, no, a quarter of a jurist <laughs> and, uh, and leaving aside a lot of uh, the economics. But anyway, I ended my career as chief for the regional trade agreements and uh, with the negotiations by I spent I, I I ended my career in December 2006 and uh, I spent the last months negotiating the transparency mechanism for uh, RTAs, which was approved. One of the small things approved in the last negotiations. Um, what else can I say? Um, how I have not been in international trade practice. I have been in multilateral trade uh, building. And uh, the main thing uh, for women in the GATT and WTO, which is the Rome of that, uh, has been that when I entered, it was, uh, I was one of the, I was the only economist there and uh, the only Spanish economist there. <laughs> um, the others were, other Spaniards were translators and there were no Brazilians. I was already married to a Brazilian. <laughs> but <clears throat> at the end, we had a lot of women. And uh, many, yes. Thank you so much. It, it's all right. It's thank all right. You, thank you. Um, Carla or me? Yeah, now uh, I would like to hear the same uh, from Gabrielle. Um, what, do you, what, what was her journey as a woman in international trade field and the role of the trade in advance of the gender equality agenda? Gabrielle, please. Thank you, Carla. And uh, thank you to the organizers. I'm delighted and honored to be here not only because it's for women, but because it's also especially for Vera. 
Vera is an institution in international trade, and uh, not only because she dealt with very technical and obscured subject matters such as rules of origin, and this Carmen would confirm how important it is, but because she started the internship, everybody in WTO and amongst um, experts in trade know Vera, whom I met, as I met Carmen Thais, and I think most of you in the context of WTO. I can say in my view that I'm proof that dreams come true. And whether it's for men or women, and especially for women, uh, it's possible. I was a, a simple lawyer in Quebec City, Canada, where I come from. And after um, an early divorce, I decided to study in Europe, in London, because this is where Mary Poppins was. But London brought me to Geneva for um, a visit of international organization, visited the GATT, and I learned that the GATT was developing, so this was 88, 89, uh, first dispute settlement system where the staff were going to help. And I thought, I want to do this. So I did a PhD on regional trade agreements, tried to get a job, couldn't find a job, nothing worked. But one day I got a call and somebody had seen my CV and they sort of arranged for an interview. And I came again, all sorts of questions. I didn't know the answers, but uh, Frieda Rustler uh, asked me, so why should we hire you if you don't know uh, those questions? And I said, I think it's my mission and the dream of my life to work for the GATT WTO. At the time, WTO was not yet, yet there. And he just laughed and he said, okay. And this was the beginning of sort of my life there with another goal. And maybe this is my characteristic, but Vera and I, we share this. I also wanted to teach. I wanted to go at university to be close to students and do things academically, conceptually, and it worked. And throughout my career, many of the steps I managed to do, I owe them to other women. You know, often we say women, they're not nice to each other. There's jealousy. Well, in my case, I may have met that, a lot of women have helped me. So Laurence Boisson Chajon sort of pushed me to teach. Even my mother, grandmother encouraged me to leave for Europe. Roslyn Higgins was the first judge at the IC J, my inspiration for the PhD. And once I arrived, as I mentioned in Geneva, me, Carmen, was also a model because she knew everything about regional trade agreement. I thought she was every very square compared to the way I look at things. But <laughs> my, uh, that's how, uh, that's if you want my journey, trying to reconcile uh, WTO working for an international organization and me, I had no contact, no, no way to get there except my own en energy and with a bit of luck, it succeeded. And <clears throat> This is where I am today, w, close to retirement, WTO dispute, and a lot of woman friendship, clever woman, to whom I owe what I've done. Thank you. Thank you very much, Gabrielle. You know, uh, together with Vera, you are also an institution. Even before I get to the training program, you were my teacher as a visiting professor at the University of Paris and with huh? Gabrielle Marceau back in 2000. So thank you very much. Now I'll turn to Thais with exactly the same question. Thais, I'm sure you have a very beautiful journey at Itamaraty 2000. Please, Thais. Obrigada, Carla. Obrigada a todas as mulheres incríveis que estão aqui, a quem está nos assistindo. Obrigada pelo convite ouvindo essas mulheres espetaculares falando antes de mim, eu sinto a minha journey tão curtinha, <risos> mas terei muito prazer em dividir ela com vocês. É, eu sou formada na Fundação Getúlio Vargas em Administração de Empresas, mas eu sempre sonhei em ser diplomata e venho de uma família simples, então, é, para eles era um pouco assustadora essa ideia e eles diziam, mas a gente não tem como te ajudar. E eu disse, não, mas é uma prova e eu vou passar na prova. né E foi assim que começou. E, e eu acho que essa é a palavra-chave de toda a minha jornada, inclusive para fazer 
esse caminho no comércio. É dedicação, dá o seu melhor, estuda, trabalha, entenda que você está abrindo novas fronteiras e vai ser difícil, você vai encontrar muita barreira, você é algo novo. Mas foi isso que eu sempre fiz. Então, eu estudei muito, passei no concurso, depois, é, como, como eu vinha da área de administração de empresa, achei que era uma boa coisa fazer o mestrado no Rio Branco em comércio, fiz o mestrado em comércio, fui para Buenos Aires, fiz, trabalhei todo o tempo na área do comércio. Então, desde o início da minha carreira, que faz quase 20 anos, eu só fiz comércio. Eu fiz comércio bilateral, fiz comércio é, nos, nos, nos postos bilaterais, fiz comércio regional, com, tratando de Mercosul, fiz comércio multilateral, tanto do lado representando um país, como lá é, sendo a assessora do, do Roberto Azevedo como diretor-geral do OMC. É, e eu concordo plenamente com o que foi dito pela Gabriel eu tive é, mulheres incríveis, a começar pela minha própria família, que sempre me disseram, você pode fazer o que você quiser, e tive mulheres incríveis dentro do Itamaraty também, que me deram apoio, a minha atual chefe mesmo, que não é da área comercial, e que me trouxe para essa nova posição de coordenadora geral de gestão e governança, que é uma área super interessante, que me acolheu com os braços abertos no momento em que eu disse ela eu tenho interesse de ir para essa área, imediatamente me deu a oportunidade, quer dizer, de novo, uma mulher abrindo caminho, eu acho que isso é importante, concordo com o que a Gabriela disse, é, não, eu acho que a gente se ajuda muito, e eu faço muito isso, tentei fazer muito isso também no meu caminho. E outra coisa que eu também queria comentar é, o que a Carmen falou, eu acho que a mulher latino-americana é, e a mulher brasileira em particular é muito forte, ela é muito independente em comparação a algum, algumas outras que eu pude ver estando na posição né, em que eu estava, quer dizer, eu acho que sim, nós temos uma sociedade ainda bastante conservadora, é, ainda enfrentamos muitas barreiras por machismo, mas a mulher daqui da região, na nossa região, é muito forte. Ela é muito, ela enfrenta, ela vai, ela se dá, ela estuda, ela trabalha, ela apresenta. E eu, claro, teve teve coisas difíceis, mas de novo, você tem que atuar, olhar com sobriedade, com pragmatismo, sabendo que você está abrindo novas fronteiras, né? Eu acho que é isso que eu dividiria em relação à minha ainda curta jornada de 20 anos. <risos> Obrigada, Thaís. Parabéns pela trajetória. Uh, now I'll turn to Carmen. Uh, would like to hear, Carmen, your reflections on the impact of your career uh, for other women in the field of international trade. Your own view. Uh, for the women in general, I, I, I frankly don't know. <laughs> However, uh, being a manager, In, and in, in the course of my career, I have been a manager of a small team with women. And I would say that what, when you choose someone to work in this area, you choose a person, a woman or a man, because of the qualities the person has. However, you have to choose the people and accept the people with what they are. And women, we have some uh, uh, ways of doing, which are not those of the men. <laughs> uh, and of course, if you have a boss who is a woman, who has been a mother, uh, who has had children, although working all the time, full time, uh, that person can influence your career by giving you confidence and at the same time, giving a lot of flexibility. Because I, I remember, it, it, this is just the things uh, very normal. I had two people in my team, two women, and they came and asked me whether they could work part-time and I said uh, okay and they started for several years working 50% and I didn't have more people but I cannot assure you that by making that I didn't go against WTO or GATT at that time uh, interests because they were 
producing 80 or 100% because these people had been well chosen and uh, they were extremely combative and they, they were always, um, they had always my confidence in what, in what they were doing. And this is uh, the only message really that I can, I can, I can take uh, as, a, as a normal way of uh, helping the women. And what was saying uh, Gabrielle, I, I agree. Women in the, in the GATT and afterwards in the WTO, but the WTO became very big. But uh, I had always the support of other women because there were some points of understanding which were difficult to, to, um, to share with uh, men. It's, uh, it, 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 it's something that is, uh, I suppose it's normal. It's like uh, speaking a language. If I speak Portuguese with you, it's easier for me and for you <laughs> uh, than English. Uh, and, and, and that's all. I, I think that uh, women, I have seen it growing a lot. Uh, I have seen people becoming more and more professional, women becoming more and more professional and uh, with confidence. Uh, with uh, This is the, the message to give to women is that they have to be confident that they are as good, if not better, than their men colleagues. It's, uh, it has been difficult, I have seen, and myself, I was always in, a, in a, I was always surrounded by men. For years and years and years, I, I was the only one. <laughs> and then it's uh, just uh, to be confident uh, and go ahead. <laughs> Thank you so much, Carmen. This is a very confident message. Fernanda, do you please have the floor? Yeah, thank you. Carmen, thank you for accepting and embracing a different kind of management early when it was get to encompass and allow women to produce and deliver while accommodating the unbalanced shared duties of raising kids and other <laughs> unpaid labor. Uh, uh, Gabriel, I know you already brushed this topic on the um, prior answer that you gave on the impact of your career for other women in the field, but would you like to expand on that a little bit? Thank you. So I think it, I would say the impact, not of only my career, but of all women, uh, and this is true, I suppose, for in WTO or elsewhere. The first woman who do things, of course, give inspirations. And uh, I, I think that in devoting a good deal of my time also to students, I supervise PhDs, I examine. Each time I get a bit tired or fed up, I think, oh, I have to continue to do it because it's like an investment. And women tend to be very, um, rec they recognize the time you give for them. So even the kind message of Carla a few minutes ago about when she remembered me in Paris. So this is something I finished in saying, I owe a lot to women and it is true, but I'm trying to give to younger women as much as I've received from women. And as to the impact more generally, and this is Vera, who sort of, uh, and Carmen, same age, leaders uh, in uh, trade. You have uh, changes that took place. So you remember in 2016, we started having a section on trade and women in the secretariat uh, or a person working on it. The section came in 17. In 18, we had the Buenos Aires sort of declaration. And at Christmas, a few months ago, the formal working group this is possible, of course, countries evolve, but also because of changes that are pushed from inside through women like Vera, Carmen, and all of you. So yes, the friendship of women is fundamental. There's sort of a 
energy capacity to do. My mother always said that, and now it's been even used by the new DG that men are not able to walk and chew gum. She always said that throughout my, my, my childhood. Well, a lot of women are able to do many things, and this is the impact. The impact is today. You are the live uh, impact of work uh, from Vera and other women. Thank you. Thank you, Gabrielle. And I'm very sure that you do a lot to empower and advance and give back, not just to the trade community, but to the women in the trade community. I mean, you've been Carla's professor back in some years. Let's not get into that. <laughs> uh, and Thais, it's the same question for you. Uh, what do you feel uh, the impacts of your career had for other women? Bom, é, é sempre difícil reconhecer qual o impacto, né? Eu acho que eu posso dizer o impacto, por exemplo, que mulheres deste painel tiveram na minha vida e abrindo o meu caminho. É, a gente sempre é, segue a vida fazendo o seu melhor, entregando o seu melhor, tentando ser feliz, tentando ajudar todas as mulheres que estão no caminho. Então, eu acho é difícil dizer, eu dizer, talvez seja mais fácil as mulheres dizerem. Então, eu já sou um testemunho, posso dizer, Vera, que cruzou o meu caminho, foi, teve um impacto maravilhoso. Gabrielle was a great example in my life. <risos> And, uh, e, e a verdade é que, se eu puder desejar algum tipo de impacto da minha história, né, ainda in the making, né, é de inspirar. Eu acho que, assim, eu espero que eu inspire consiga inspirar de que, sim, é possível você assumir posições de relevância, é possível você escolher a área que você quer trabalhar, mesmo que seja uma área que, em geral, não é não tem tantas mulheres, hoje em dia tem muito mais do que já teve no passado, graças, inclusive, a essas mulheres que estão aqui hoje, né é, e que nós estamos aqui é, é, ou escutando delas. Eu acho que, se eu puder servir como exemplo, como elas também servem, de que a gente precisa superar essa síndrome de impostora, eu acho que a Carmen falou um pouco disso, as mulheres sentem que nunca são boas o suficiente, nunca estão preparadas o suficiente, é, se o exemplo do meu caminho e do caminho dessas outras mulheres aqui e das tantas outras que não estão aqui hoje, mas que servem como como esse essa fonte de inspiração para mim, por exemplo, se eu pudesse ser isso para alguém, estou é, satisfeita, não preciso de mais nada, né? É, eu acho que eu, escuto, eu cresci escutando muito que nada supera o valor do trabalho. Eu acho que isso é uma grande verdade. Se eu puder dar esse exemplo, que eu realmente dou muito duro em cada passo da minha carreira, e tento ser sempre uma boa colega, que eu acho que é outra coisa muito importante, ser uma boa colega. É algo também muito, muito importante em qualquer área de atuação que você está. Eu acho que, eu espero que essas mensagens tenham ficado para as mulheres que cruzaram o meu caminho. Eu acho que é, é, é basicamente isso que eu posso esperar. Obrigada, Thais, mesmo. Um, I do think that aiming to be the mentors that we had for others is the best thing that one can aspire to do. Um, May I? Sure, yes, <laughs> jump ahead. Let's put a little bit together the two languages, right? Thank you very much for all of you. Uh, agora, para as, para as brasileiras que estão aqui, uh, nós somos, nós agradecemos muito. Espera, eu vou só te interromper um pouquinho, porque a gente ainda tem mais um round de perguntas. Ah, desculpe. Eu Não, está tudo bem. Eu sou apressada, vocês sabem disso. Eu sei. Pronto, três perguntas, desculpe. Vamos lá. Uh, I know. Now it's for the last round of questions. Um, and it's not just about how those amazing women inspire and help create the women in trade for the future generations, but how they are shaping the future of trade themselves. So Carmen, you were the head of the PTA negotiations for years. What is your take on the future of the WTO and the preferential agreements? 
Ah, uh, this has been uh, the conversation with Vera in the last uh, 20 years. <laughs> um, okay, um, let's see. I have a theory. I have a theory. I saw China exceeding the WTO in 2001. And there were at that time around, well, I don't know exactly, but maybe around 90 uh, PTAs in, in the WTO registry. And now I think there are at least three times that in 20 years. Um, to me, the PTAs and the WTO are not uh, one against the other. Uh, the only thing is that the PTAs have evolved and the WTO has not. <laughs> now, uh, I, 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 I wouldn't say the WTO. I think for a, 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 this way of doing is not efficient. You can imagine uh, negotiating, uh, I don't know, two, 200 uh, PTAs uh, and you are not uh, able to negotiate a, a WTO or a multilateral trading system. Uh, the, the time spent is uh, absolutely enormous for nothing, for making things chaotic in a certain sense. Then the WTO has to evolve. Uh, and it has to evolve with what is around and, uh, and to see what is in these PTAs and evolve in that parallelly uh, and evolve dramatically because we are not in 44, nor in 45. <laughs> Thank you okay. very much, Carmen. Now uh, with these specific questions, uh, last questions to Gabriel. Gabriel, you work at the DSB is Paramount. And we note it during uh, reading your interview in the preface of the book that you mentioned worries about redistribution in international trade. And uh, we got curious, would you please extend on that thought? Uh, thank you. It's a very complex topic. And again, it's difficult to speak in front of economists like Vera and Carmen, but yes, I worked for many years uh, essentially in dispute, except a few years where I worked in the DG's office. Um, and in dispute, you know, the, the idea is that you determine who's right, who's wrong, whether there's a violation. But what I expressed at the time, I think uh, the main challenge was redistribution. There are no rules in the WTO that tells government what to do with the benefits of trade. We all know that trade will lead to growth. We've seen countries growing. There is no doubt about that. But I started in the late 90s helping my colleagues who were challenging the TRIPS agreement, intellectual property, because of AIDS. And then you had the big movements of NGOs saying WTO or trade killed children. This led to the amendment of the TRIPS, but this triggered a reflection in me about what could we do to encourage government to distribute properly the profits of trade. If you collect duties and the president of the country buy jewelries for his wife instead of building hospitals and schools, this will not be useful. Jewelries can be nice for the wife, but it won't help. How to put in place rules in systems, national systems that are so different, so that there is some sort of encouragement, not to say obligations, to distribute properly. I don't know, but we'll have to tackle that. And one step to start may be in the TPR report. When uh, we started talking about trade and environment, trade and labor, the questions started from governments in the context of this non-dispute process of TPR. And it has led to further changes. The theme of your um, conference today is the impact of women for future. So when I raise this issue as a big challenge and we see it with the pandemic, who gets vaccinated? All these very difficult moral questions 
will also need, I think, to be somehow reconciled with trade rules because it's all very well to grow, uh, but some countries grow, but not to the benefit of every individual in the country. So for me, that's one of the big challenge and the pandemic confirmed that that's a difficult issue. Not that I have any sort of answer, only questions. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriela. What a nice reflection. What a nice reflection of the future of the WTO. Now I turn to Fernanda to the last question and then we turn to Vera. Thank you. Thais, uh, you are a Brazilian diplomat. You are an expert in WTO. What are your perspectives for the WTO and the Brazilian international trade policy for the future of multilateral trade and multilateral relationships in general? Bom, eu acho que a palavra reforma, embora tenha, já está ficando batida, sem dúvida, é a palavra central é, no, quando a gente olha para o futuro da OMC. Eu acho que a Carmen também já falou, quer dizer, muita coisa avançou e a OMC, até por ser um sistema é, multilateral baseado no consenso e o, o, os tempos do consenso é, não são os mesmos tempos de grupos like-minded, né? Claro, se todos pensam igual, a coisa avança muito mais rápido. Se todos estão no mesmo nível de desenvolvimento, as coisas avançam mais rápido. Mas se você tem um consenso de 164 países com níveis de desenvolvimento, momentos políticos, prioridades e tudo tão diferente, é óbvio que os tempos não serão os mesmos para qualquer mudança, para qualquer reforma. né? Então, acho que é, isso é central. Você realmente precisa, e se ela não se reformar, ela vai se tornar, é, ela vai ser provavelmente... É, é, replaced né, por uma outra ou, ou ela vai perder o seu poder, porque ela precisa mostrar que ela funciona e que ela funciona para todos. Né? É, eu acho que é, o momento de incerteza não ajuda, já havia muita incerteza sobre o futuro antes, agora com a pandemia as incertezas são até inclusive sobre distribuição de poder né, no mundo, então é, já havia uma incerteza, agora a incerteza é ainda maior. Né? É, eu tenho certeza, assim, se eu posso ter uma certeza, é que a, a pessoa que está à frente da organização é uma pessoa preparada, experiente, é, da mais alta qualidade, e happens to be uma, né? Porque é isso, ela está ali porque ela é extremamente preparada, qualificada, e a pessoa certa no lugar certo. E happens to be uma, então, eu acho que isso, num dia como hoje, se torna ainda mais especial, né? Agora, uma coisa é certa, a, a, o sistema tem muito valor e um valor reconhecido, ninguém toma tanta energia tentando reformar algo que, que não tem valor. Né? Então, eu, eu acho que isso é uma reforma, uma organização continua tendo seu valor reconhecido. E em relação ao Brasil, o Brasil tem um papel central nisso e, e ele, não tem evita ele não tem deixado de, de desempenhar esse papel, não. Ele é visto como um dos players mais importantes na OMC, ele tem atuado muito em todas as frentes de reforma da organização, com uma competência técnica e política, com a competência técnica e política de sempre, né? porque é por isso mesmo que ele é tão reconhecido. E ele tem aí buscado construir consensos em direção dessa reforma. Eu acho que está é, tá corretíssimo, do meu modesto ponto de vista, o que o Brasil está fazendo na OMC hoje. Muito obrigada, Thais. Obrigada pelo insight e um, agradecer todo o tempo das painelistas para responder as nossas perguntas e passar para a Vera, maravilhosa, para fazer o nosso encerramento do livro e, enfim, do evento inteiro. Bom, como vocês viram, obrigada mais uma vez. Uh, e quero dizer, meninas, antes de tudo, que vocês são meu orgulho. You are I'm really proud of all, all of you. Para as, para as, as, para as meninas que não são tão meninas, as novas meninas, e eu acho que cada minuto, cada briga, foram muitas, eu sempre ameaço, Gabriela, I, I said all the time that I have to, I have to, to, to write a book about the uh, internship in Geneva, to tell behind the stories, you can imagine how many stories we have to tell. Mas, uh, vamos lá, o que eu acho que é importante, a mensagem do futuro, que é o seguinte, eu acredito em multilateralismo, eu acho que o mundo 
anda sempre aos pêndulos, e quanto mais a, a gente vive, mais a gente vê que volta tudo, tá? Eu apresento a minha assistente, que acabou de aparecer aqui, disse que cansou já da, da, da palestra. Bom, resultado, ah, acredito em multilateralismo e acho que vocês devem perseguir isso, tá? Quando você fala em multilateralismo, não só entender, isto como, como a Gabriela falou e a Thais também, estudar muito, não adianta. Eu, eu, eu brinco, né? eu cheguei em Genebra, não era uma advogada. E eu passei meus fins de semana e minhas noites lendo os livros de, do Jackson. Gabriela, I, I read all the books of Jackson, John Jackson. I read about... I have a marvelous professor at that time. It was Guido Soares, the, the, the minister of the mission. And that's it. You have to, to fight for, for, not for a place, for your own ideals, right? E aí, o que, que, o que, que eu acho para as meninas uh, que são novas? Tem áreas na, no comércio que mudaram, o comércio mudou muito. Quais são os temas novos? Uh, toda a parte que eu acho que é fundamental, toda a parte de desenvolvimento sustentável, meio ambiente, estes são os grandes temas. Mudou, o mundo mudou de tal forma que não é... E, e aí a pergunta é como... How this will affect trade, Gabriel? You have sustainability, you have uh, all now finance, all finance uh, uh, persons. We have a new uh, balance sheet. The European Union is imposing a balance sheet, not a financial balance sheet, but a, a sustainability balance sheet with patterns that you have the standards that you have to follow, that you, a big uh, a businessman, a CEO, you have to prove that you are doing something on the, 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 the environment and on sustainability. And this is a big area for all of you uh, ladies to, to study. The second area is the digital, the digital the world. It's not only that about the digital that change our life. Come on, the digital way, uh, wave is changing your, your future. Is, uh, and your present, because what's a lawyer in the digital, in digital uh, economy? What's going to happen with, uh, with all of you, right? You are going to be substituted by a robot? No, no, Gabriel, great. I agree with Gabriel. And then you have a third, a big, a third, a third uh, uh, issue that is a gender, trade and gender. Come on. Uh, Go to the, the, the a book on trade and gender that w, WHO show, I think, uh, uh, two, six months ago about trade and women. And then you can see how many things you have to do, how many things you have to study. And like environment, the issue of gender will be a big issue. Firms, and I saw, I read this yesterday in The Economist, how the number of uh, women are being pressed to go up on the, 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 the firms, on the institutions, and so on. So, esses são três grandes itens que vocês, meninas, uh, jovens, devem, devem perseguir. E mais importante ainda, é perseguir o sonho, estudar. No, na época de pandemia, eu não gosto, don't be depressed. Use, use este tempo para estudar e para crescer numa área nova. A área digital é um mundo para explorar. Vocês são jovens, é isso que vocês têm que fazer. A área de meio ambiente é um mundo para explorar. Como tudo isso vai uh, impactar comércio, né? E uh, então a história é: usem este ano e não tenham dúvida. O próximo ano, este ano 2021, nós vamos ficar em casa. Então vamos continuar estudando, crescendo muito, porque isto um dia passa. Esta pandemia vai acabar, como todas as outras histórias do mundo. E nesta hora vocês têm que aparecer no mundo dizendo, eu cresci. Nesses dois anos de pandemia, eu já não sou a mesma, eu cresci. Então, muito obrigado de novo a todos. Vocês estão no fundo do meu coração. Eu estou muito orgulhosa de vocês. E muito obrigado para, para a Carmen. Thank you very much, Gabriel, Thais. Thank you very much. You are really important women in my life also. Thank you. Obrigada, Vera. Que, que mensagem inspiradora e motivacional. Vera motivacional. A gente tem aqui duas perguntas da audiência. Eu have two questions for the audience. The first one was read, replied by Vera. Uh, what would be your advice for women looking to start a career in international trade? I, I think she replied that we really have to study and take the opportunity of the uh, quarantine to study. But we have a very interesting 
a question uh, from Maria Isabel Matias. She works, if you see a different attitude in younger women concerning confidence in occupying leadership positions. Muito, muito. Duas, duas histórias, né? Uh, quando a gente começou, era aquela, eu dizia assim, não adianta brigar, fazer escândalos, né? Mas vai, 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 pushing, vai, vai abrindo o seu espaço, não desanima, vai, recebe um não, dois, aí no terceiro, né, você consegue abrir o seu caminho. Agora, o que eu sinto é uma mudança muito grande. Você tem mulheres muito mais ativas, você tem uma, uma liderança muito mais presente do que tinha no meu tempo. Tá? E eu acho que eu vivi isso o tempo todo, num mundo que era muito mais difícil, e eu acho que agora, não sei, eu sinto que isso é, é realmente mais fácil. Tá? E eu acho que o exemplo que vocês têm é outra coisa. Let me remember you, uh, Gabriel, when I arrive in Geneva, there is no internet. Come on! I, my, I, I studied WTO all my life begging for papers and, you know, Xerox copies of the agreements and so on. And I remember doing big, big lists and, and tables of uh, 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 trade, international trade for the mission already and negotiating the end of Uruguay Rind using paper and pen to put tariffs and see how we are going to negotiate this tariff. Vision. A gente sobreviveu. Não, então, vejam, vocês têm internet, vocês podem assistir cursos do mundo inteiro. Não tem que ficar em casa, não tem que ficar depressiva, não tem que... Sabe aquela história? Não percam tempo. Time is really important for you. Now, Gabriel, please, go ahead. I wanted, I wanted because I hear, keep hearing you, wanted to say that what happens often is that women... Uh, because of their uh, capacity to give birth, I think, and to innovate, therefore, are often the leader of changes. And you, Vera, with all your work on trade and exchange, exchange rate, you have changed the world. This topic didn't exist that much. <laughs> and your focus, and the one of your students, because you sent me some of your students, on private standard. Two examples of subject matter that you developed. Talk about impact. That's all I wanted to say. Uh, yes, there are tons of stories on internship because internship is also a way to give to the next generation. And as you know, in the WTO, I think almost 10% of the people who used to come in were interns of some sort. There are different sort of programs where people are more or less unpaid uh, or little paid. But I wanted to thank you, Vera, because you are the symbol of impact of women. Right. On the substance, the topic you develop, but also the relationship. Thank you. Thank you, Gabriel. Do you know about the change rate? I started this issue and then, come on, I always kill it when I start talking about this. But I, I travel a lot. I went to China, I went to United States and all the time say, come on, uh, WTO without exchange rate is a fiction. You have to uh, talk about tariffs. And so we got it. We got the idea. And I think that uh, you have to, to, to push for. And for standards, come on, this is the, 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 the big issue. When I said up to you about financial sheets, you, are, you have to, to see that the financial statement of the firms, you have to develop standards. What is a circular economy? What is a, is a, a, a sustainable enterprise? And this is important. Uh, uh, Brazil is now moving and asking uh, to, be, to be admitted uh, in the, the OECD. OCD. And then what, what's going is the same. We have to learn the language. We have to, to start to talk about, uh, to understand what's going on. And more important than this, to understand the metrics, what they are talking about, why Brazil has a, such a, a, a bad uh, uh, stand, a note to, to uh, compare with the other uh, uh, countries, right? So for you girls, o mundo está aberto e eu gostaria, Carla e Andresa, se vocês concordam, sugerir para vocês que, que, que eu espero uh, poder ajudar e criando uma, uma, uma área para as mulheres e para as meninas, eu gostei muito dessa ideia. No centro, eu coordeno o Centro de Comércio Internacional da Getúlio, e assim como eu tenho o CDE e os trabalhos que nós estamos fazendo, vamos criar uma Trader Woman, uh, 
e vamos criar uma, uma, alguma coisa com a WITS, WITS, né? uma, uma, alguma coisa conjunta, onde as, 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 as mulheres, as meninas que escrevam sobre comércio. Eu faço uma... Faço uma um, faço um blind review, faço uma revisão, faço um grupo, e, a, e sem esperar, é como o um livro, tem que ser digital, não tem que esperar né, nada, tem que acontecer. Então, a, esses artigos que, vão, que eu vou recebendo, a gente vai colocando em assuntos diferentes, vamos pendurá-los todos na, na internet, no centro, and, and certainly I will ask for the advice for Carmen, and Gabriel and Thais, how we can push this idea uh, uh, ahead. So, Thank great. It's a good, great. good, I think it's a good, good opportunity. Thank you so much, Vera, for the invitation. I'm sure it will be a success, you know, and I invite all of you who are watching this webinar to read the book and the articles. They are so uh, interesting and they uh, go through all the subjects that were mentioned here, like um, exchange rates, uh, uh, private standards, and all of the subjects that Vera has once worked with. Uh, we have articles of this written by the fabulous women we have in the, the network. And we have a very loving introduction written by Vera's pupils of many years and ages. Uh, and it's a pleasure, a delight and an honor to have been part of the book and to have co-written the introduction um, because it's giving back to amazing mentors a little bit of the enthusiasm, the energy and the respect that you deserve and that you gave us. The book is free. It is highly accessible. It's going to uh, be aired online at the website of the Center for um, Global PCGI mm. <laughs> and, uh, and the website of Women in Sight Trade. E quem vai colocar a capa do livro que ficou tão bonita? Vamos lá, quem é que consegue colocar a capa do livro aí? Eu acho... Desafios, que... challenges. Share, bota um share e vamos lá. <risos> e ver se consegue. Vamos ver. Foi um prazer. It was a pleasure, Gabriela. It was a pleasure to see you again, Carmen. And it's true. We spend many, many lunches talking and drinking wine in very nice restaurants. <risos> And then deciding what you can do, how you can help uh, regional arrangements. And then we develop the idea of a meta language. Remember, Carmen, a meta language. What are the, the most important uh, guidance uh, for regional arrangements? That's it. Yes. And remember, Gabriel, the, the, we, we, we try to finish the agreement on rules of origin. Impossible, as always. And then I, I had said, invited Gabriel to say, Gabriel, can we transform an agreement, a hard law in a guidance, in a, just guidelines? And then Gabriel developed a marvelous theory about guidelines, how important they are and how they can substitute. It's soft law, come on, it's soft law. And I think that it that works. must must be transformed from a hard law. Okay, you have treaties, but come on, go on with soft law. For the ones yes, really I'm in love with soft law. I am. I am now convinced that soft law is more much important than anything else. Let's be pragmatic. Let's be pragmatic. Exactly. Right. Exactly. I think. I think. I am in love of soft law also right. because I think this is the way to go. <laughs> yes. True. So true. So back and to, to the old debt. Thank you to all for and involving me. And to uh, very nice. So we have also to involve more the private sector. Yes. That's it. I fully agree. Two good ideas. Soft law and the and come on, Carmen, you have this. Go to the go to the to the, the what they are doing with finance and uh, helping and supporting uh, sustainability. That's it. You have to involve the, the, the enterprise and just get it, you have yes. to do it. If not, yes. the banks, you come on, how can you see a bank, a bank, person from the financial world being green? It's a thing that I said, 
where is the, the money, right? Why they become green? And because of this, a yeah. differentiation of firms that support development and uh, uh, sustainable development. I, 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 am, studying, I am studying the auctions for carbon. Please and maybe do. we have to go into this way to make caps and uh, <laughs> and uh, and That's trade. <laughs> we have to organize yeah. another seminar to talk about this big, this big two this big issues, right? Digital and uh, and environment. Yeah. They, that's it. So, time to finish. I think. Thank you. And uh, so, for everybody, Carla, do you want to say the last word? Fernanda. Ah, you got it. No. Ah. Uh, ah. Uh. We've been trying to get the book cover to show. We've been failing. <laughs> yes, because it's not, it's all because of the internet and this is not the, the okay, it's another, it's YouTube and, and uh, but, but come on, you can go to the center and you get the, 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 the cover of the book. Yeah, I'm, I'm sorry, to, I'm I sorry. Want to so, yeah. Great. I want a copy of the book. I will. Absolutely. I will it today, immediately, immediately. Okay, good. Okay. Really? Yeah. Bye, everyone. Bye bye. bye. Thank, Thank you so much. Bye -bye. Happy, happy International Women's Day to yeah. all of you. Happy International you. Women's bye. Day. Bye. 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 Bye.